the royal wedding. And BBC Television prepares to light St Paul's Cathedral for the world. The first thing that strikes you is the immense size and height of the cathedral. And walking along the Triforium, you realise that the lighting equipment has to be in about 70 feet above the nave floor. After all, there will be about 21 television cameras, plus still photographers and uh, film cameramen, uh, all expecting good lighting. There's a solo trumpet and there's a, an opera singer, a soprano, that's going to be performing. And uh, we're covering that with quite a few microphones, as you saw. When we bring the events of July the 29th to the screen, we only have one chance. And as a result of the preparation and planning, we aim to get it right. The Royal Wedding on BBC Television. The Royal Wedding. And the BBC installs the microphones for television, radio and the world. I shall dangle wires right from the Triforium area down from there with just two little microphones on the end of it and they will actually pick up the marriage ceremony from the Archbishop and the Prince and Lady Diana. And oh, door, how narrow is it, is it? Oh, we can get lights through there? Oh, you can get lights through there, but they're very tight. You may wonder why we need a designer for the Royal Wedding in a building like this. It really is to make all our technical equipment and scaffolding rigs look as inobtrusive as possible. If you think of the uh, different processions, the orchestra in the north transept, the choir, the trumpeters and so on, it's very important uh, to see everything that is happening and that's one of the great advantages of television. Uh, we're not limited to just one seat in the nave. The Royal Wedding on BBC Television. Coming up under Ludgate Hill there with a few late arrivals. Everyone with their flags waving, the bunting out. And of course, all waiting now for the main event of the day. Well, next door, of course, we've got uh, the 45 co foreign commentators who are going to be describing the scene around the world. But to describe the scene for us, on the route and in the cathedral itself for this wedding of His Royal Highness Prince Charles and Lady Diana Spencer. Let me hand you over to our commentator, Tom Fleming. Once upon a time, there was a prince who lived in a palace. He fell in love with a fair young maiden and he asked her to marry him. On a summer's day, with the Queen and all the royal family, they drove in carriages through crowded streets to be wed at the church on the hill with their friends from many nations around them. Once Upon a Time is the 29th of July, 1981, and what you will see now is no fairy story, but the story of two very real young people beginning their life together in quite a real world and doing so not as they might well have preferred to do, quietly and privately, but in front of the eyes and ears of the world, sharing their day of happiness with us all. And here are some of the people who have been gathering all along the processional way since Monday afternoon with their periscopes. Some have camped out in the time-honoured British ritual of historic royal occasions and more comfortably accommodated have been the guests of the bridegroom's parents at Buckingham Palace. Because this is where the story began, with the birth of Prince Charles of Edinburgh on November the 14th, 1948. This familiar landmark to tourist and Londoner alike. On that day, crowds outside the railings, uh, Commonwealth Prime Minister Sir Robert Menzies among them, shook each other by the hand, snapped each other on the back as if to say congratulations. 